All right, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Um, we're gonna do a little uh, <clears throat> two-parter today, same day. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen, I just did the review for the um, KZPR1 Pro, and now we are doing a two-parter. So I'm going to be doing um, resin 3D printed IMs. I have the True Theory Hexa, and I also have the HM20, and I will be um, s briefly comparing the two. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, comparisons between the two. I will get into a little bit, um, but I figured I would knock out two birds with one stone, and um, I am going to... Uh, review both of these IMs because they are both 3D printed um, and they both have um, multiple drivers inside plus they're both hybrids. Uh, so the Truthier Hexa is $80 on Shenzhen Audio. Uh, it is a 1 plus 3 and the HM20 is a uh, 1 dynamic and 6 BA so it's 14 drivers total, 7 per side, 7mm um, dynamic driver plus 6BA, and then 10mm driver plus 3BA. Um, <clears throat> prices, the HM20, if I'm not mistaken, is 20, uh, sorry, $60, and uh, like I said, the Hexa is $80. Um, now this pair of Hexa are special because they are transparent. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see it, but try to Let's see if I can zoom in on it. There we go. So you guys can see um, they are kind of transparent. I made sure to put lacquer on them. So normally they're not this transparent. Normally they're um, like cloudy, but I wanted to make them clear because I thought it would look cool. So yeah, basically you can see all the drivers, you can see the tubes and stuff. They're not super visible just because they're in a like a like a dark resin. Um, but for the most part, uh, they are see-through. So. It's kind of cool. You can see the way the tubes go and everything. You can see the BA inside. Um, and I another thing is uh, I will be opening both of these IMs up. Um, just taking the face plates off just so you guys can see inside. Um, so, and then uh, KZ. It's only fair that I show them off too. Whoops. Uh, let me see if I can. Come on. Don't look at her. There we go. This one's a little harder to see inside. But you can kind of make out the dynamic driver there. And then the BA inside. And there is... This is what I said earlier about KZ sending me dark, dark IMs. Let me, uh, sorry guys. Let me adjust my light. Maybe this might help. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> Maybe? No? Yes? No? So yeah, you, you can kind of see inside them. There's two bores. One for the um, BA and a larger one for the um, dynamic driver. So anyway, let me reset this real quick. Um. Let's open up Hexa real quick. We'll take a look inside. So for $80, what does $80 get you? Gets you a nice fancy box. Personally, I don't care for fancy boxes. It's just more stuff to throw away. Um, our planet is dying, so if you would like to save the environment, I would definitely recommend sticking with more simple packaging. Um, it's just crap. Can't take it with you when you die. 
I know that sounds really uh, demented, but it's the truth, and that's the way I feel about it. Um, although I do, I do like the anime waifu. I mean, it is, it is cute. So, but um, honestly, I, I, I don't care about it that much. So you get this little soft pouch inside. This pouch is nice. Feels good. Soft. It's like leather fake leather um, and then you have the cable here so now I'm not a super big fan of this type of cable um, it is a good cable but it's I just don't like how far the ear hooks stick out especially on this I am the, the ear hooks stick way out of the ears like at least like an inch and a half inch something like that and it's just too far it just looks goofy <laughs> Um, if I use other cables, it's not as bad, but for whatever reason, uh, the ear hooks on top of the length of the connector already, it's just too much. Um, but it is a solid, solid cable. It's, um, decent. It's no, no better than, like, your typical KZ cable, just cheap IM cable. Um, you do get a pretty decent selection of tips. So you get this little card, and this is nice too because you can keep all your tips nice and neat on it. Um, you get three sets of wide bore, um, and you get three sets of narrow bore, and I actually have them switched up. So let me move them back. So yeah, so there you go. So you get your narrow bore, you get your wide bore, and then you have a pair of foams. Um, looks like the foams are just large or medium and just kind of rest in there so pretty simple and I am just sitting here there's nothing underneath it there's no warranty card or manual or anything like that um, you do get this little character here and you can there's a little card inside you can use to kind of prop it up if you want to make it like a picture um, I assume that character's name is Hexa Alright, let's look on the back. Here's the graph. Okay, for anybody that hasn't seen the graph before. Um, it's a pretty smooth, pretty smooth graph, pretty, uh, pretty linear. Um, you got your, uh, peak in the peanut gain, uh, exactly at 3 kilohertz. It's, it's like your typical moon drop tuning. Um, so you have a little bit of emphasis in the sub bass, kind of tapers off towards the um, lower mids, so that's your 200 hertz right there, levels out, um, kind of dips just ever so slightly lower, around 500, but it's, it's nothing, um, it's basically level from 200 to uh, 1 kilohertz, and then you got your rise, um, your peak at 3k, and then you get a little bit of a dive, um, around 5, 6, 7 kilohertz, and then you have your 8 peak. 8k peak um, unfortunately this peak is audible it is real it does exist um, it is not just a uh, artifact of the coupler or the measurement um, and then you have your treble tail or your roll off after 10 kilohertz um, a little bit about this tuning it is a very good tuning um, it is close not it is not my ideal tuning but it is close to my ideal tuning um, personally I would like the bass rise to go a little bit higher um, I like the uh, curve of the bass on the truth air zero so it's kinda like rounded um, dips off a little bit in the sub bass but it just it sounds really good it sounds nice and and full-bodied um, it's got a lot of uh, character to it very rich, um, pretty tight. It's not the tightest bass I've heard, but it's pretty good. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so this is the tuning. If you have any problem with the peak in the 3K, it'd be like um, vo in the vocal area. Uh, they might come across a little bit on the nasally side. Usually nasally is more um, around like 4K, 5K. That's when you start getting into like the nasally re region. This is more the upper shout, um, 
so some people might find it a little bit shouty. And then like I said, you got that 8K bump there. But the rest of it is pretty smooth. You need your Pina Gain because uh, what happens is, for anybody that doesn't know, the, the IEMs, they bypass what is called the Pina, um, which is part of the outer part of your ear. And what that does is that kind of directs sound and it also kind of EQs what you hear. And because this bypasses that portion and connects directly into the inner ear, um, you need to kind of compensate for that area being lost. Um, and that area kind of makes up the gain in the, um, in the audible, like, um, speech kind of vocal region. So that's what the peanut gain is for. It is to compensate for this being um, directly fed into the eardrum and bypassing the outer ear. Now headphones don't have a peanut gain because they don't need a peanut gain. It's just yep, IMs that need them. Um, so it is necessary, um, but the amplitude determines uh, kind of well, and the quality of drivers determine how how shouty things get. So. Um, let's see, what do we got here? So we got, there we go, 1DD, 3BA, um, the diaphragm is a PU-LCP composite, so I'm almost 100% positive this is the same diaphragm that was in the Truth Ear Zero, um, they're just reusing it in this IM, which is good, it's fine, because the Truth Ear Zero actually had pretty good bass, um, if anything, it was a little bit, a little bit soft, uh, a little puffy, but, uh, or a little, I wouldn't say it's bouncy, it's pretty tight, but it's just a little soft sometimes, um, so anyway, using the same diaphragm, uh, total harmonic distortion is less than 1% at 1 kilohertz, uh, at 90, sorry, 94 dB, uh, the sensitivity is 120 decibels, um, at 1 kilohertz, the impedance is 20 and a half ohms plus minus 15 percent so basically that's like the tolerance the variable so it could be plus 15 percent it could be minus just depends um that's also everything's tested at one kilohertz pretty much uh, the frequency response is kind of fascinating so eight hertz to 40 kilohertz it's closer to the human here uh human ear and then the coupler that they used free field um what they used to, to test the IM. And then the cable is oxygen free silver plated. So another silver plated cable just like the last IM we spoke about. Um anyway, yep. Hey gears. Truth ears. Alright, so let's zoom out. Um build quality. Let's zoom back in again real quick. Oh no, am I upside down? Ah, oh, shoot guys, I'm sorry, I'm upside down. Give me one second. I can't believe I'm upside down. That's stupid. That is so dumb. Oh, now I'm upside down again. You, turd. Okay, is this right? I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, build quality. Uh, the build is all resin with, uh, I believe it is a metal. Uh, it could be, could be plastic. It feels like metal, though. Um, face plate. Very angular design. Um, the fit is not great for my ears. Um, I heard, what's his face? Oh, I forget the reviewer's name now. Um, anyway, I've heard some people say that they really like the fit, and I just, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's decent, but for my ears, it, it, they don't fit very well. They just stick out very far, um, especially once you have a tip on the, on the, um, nozzles. It's like the same story as the, uh, Truth Air Zero. The ergonomics just aren't there. They're 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 okay. They're close. You know, it's not. There's nothing uncomfortable about it. 
but they just don't, they don't fit great. They don't sit, like seal inside my ears very well. Um, and I guess that's just due to like the, the angular nature. Not really sure why they went with that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, both two pin connectors. Let's talk about dampeners, shall we? Okay, so this I am uses these little dampers here. Okay, see that? Uh, one is for the mids, and one is for the treble. Um, I believe, and I could be mistaken, but I'm almost positive because I deal with this stuff on a daily basis. Um, the orange damper is for the mids, and the green damper is for the treble. So basically, it goes as follows. You have a dynamic driver for bass and mids. You have a single BA for upper mids. Okay, I'm not sure how well you guys can see inside there. Not very well, apparently. So you have a... See, maybe that helps a little bit. So you have a single BA for mids, and then you have a dual BA for treble. And that's basically how it goes. Um, 10 millimeter dynamic driver, is that P-U-L-C-P? But anyway, so you have these things called dampeners. These are uh, called like Knowles style dampers, um, and that's because they're used in balanced armatures. Um, this is typically what you would see in like kind of a more expensive IM. Um, recently, you're starting to see them in cheaper IMs, but before they used to be like strictly in like Etymotics or West Tone, you know, RE40s or whatever the hell the model is. Um, but they recently started using them in cheaper IMs. Um, if you buy them off AliExpress, they are $2 per pair. Okay, that's the minimum price. Uh, they go up from there. They go up to like three dollars, four dollars, um, but two dollars per pair is the minimum price. You need a special tool to remove them and reinsert them. Um, it is this little uh, what do you call it? Like thread thread tap. Okay. So it's this little thread tap here. This is what you use to remove and replace the dampeners. And the reason why I say that is because with the design of these IMs, as with most Moondrop IMs, uh, you have these dampeners exposed to your ears, and there's really nothing keeping them from getting clogged. If these manage to get clogged, um, you will have issues with sound you'll start to um, experience channel imbalance and um, so if you ever do buy a pair of these or you have a pair of like blessing twos for example or any other IMs that use this style of damper you can go on AliExpress and you can buy this little tool and you can buy the replacement dampers I actually have a whole bunch of them <clears throat> I won't bring them out now I'm not gonna get into all that but Anyway, you can replace them, so, and the various colors are the different ratings of damper. So, for, for instance, the orange one uh, has a higher dampening factor than the green one. Uh, the green one is meant for more, um, like, mid-BA, treble BA, and the orange is meant strictly for, like, lower mid to, like, mid-BA, okay? Um, <clears throat> the higher the rating, the kind of like smoother the sound gets, and it gets rid of certain peaks, it evens out certain peaks um, within the BA, so it's basically how they tune IMs. Um, the, let's talk about the HM20 real quick. So the build on the HM20 is a little bit different. So you have they call them catheters, but it's <clears throat> two different tubes. So you have one for the, the dynamic driver, and then you have um, a single BA, 
a pair of BA and then another pair of BA and the tube jumps from one to the other so it goes from one jumps to the other and then jumps to the other and comes out and I will now show you so this is kind of a clever design KZ has been doing this for a while other companies do this too so this screen that you see right here this is not only for keeping like earwax out this is also for tuning this is the dampener so it is the same as this thing right here okay it, it achieves the same function um, and there are different uh, densities of mesh for these as well all right so just show you guys real quick all right so you see in there you can see the tube so the large one is the dynamic driver okay and that small one there is the BA alright and then that one uh, dampener that one screen takes care of all of them takes care of all the BA and everything so kind of a clever design very similar in, in construction um, except I'm not sure if KZ is venting their dynamic yeah no they're not so the the construction is similar but the tuning principles are very different and that, that was another reason why I wanted to show these two IMs off they are two very very different tuning principles um, one of them I I like and I agree with more than the other I guess you can guess which one okay I'm not such a big fan of this design although I will say that <clears throat> KZ did a very good job with these um, they are very well tuned for what they are um, I actually like them a little bit better than the than the um, hexa but that's just for a couple nitpicky reasons so <coughs> excuse me so let's talk about sound quality um, <coughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, um, base quality on the Hexa would be like a 7. Um, on the HM20 would be like a 4 or 5. And here's the problem. Is that I'm not sure what kind of new driver they used in this, this Xun, XUN 7. It's not even the same driver really as the, as the regular Xun or Xun driver. Um, it's actually different. I won't go into that right now, but anyway. Um, but whatever it is, it's, it's the base is kind of rubbery. Um, it, it's not very good. It's, it's kind of bouncy. It's more mid-bass focused than anything. Um, the sub-bass just isn't very well defined. It's kind of soft and pillowy. But the mid-bass is okay. The mid-bass is... is is decent. It's still a little bit on the rubbery side, a little bit on the bouncy side, but it is um, definitely much, uh, much more dynamic and um, a little more textured than the sub bass. The sub bass is just a little bit weak on these. So it's there. It's present. It just doesn't. It's not the greatest. Um, and then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the um, Hexa, which has got way better bass. The driver quality is just, it's just better all around. It sounds a lot better. Um, Mid-range quality, that's a toss-up. Um, there's a couple weird, kind of like little peaks and valleys inside the um, HM20. But the, the mid-range quality, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. Both of these IMs have coherence issues, okay? But their coherence issues are different. Each one is different. They're similar, but they're different. Um, and and this is how I'll, I'll explain it: is the in the hexa. The, um, let me see. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to how I can explain this to you guys. Um, here, I'll use actual speakers as an example. Okay. So within every IM design, 
you have, let me just move these up a little bit, you have two speakers, okay, and if they are at the same approximate distance from your ears, um, they will sound exactly the same. Okay, now, now, granted, this is, we're, we're talking about one ear here, this isn't like one for one ear, you know, one for one ear and one for the other, no, there's two per ear, okay? If they both fire at the same speakers, okay, same speakers fire at the same time, and they both, the sounds reach in your ear at the same time, it's not going to sound any different whatsoever, okay? But if you move one slightly forward, it's going to begin to cancel certain frequencies out, okay? And then certain frequencies are going to become louder. And then if I move it forward a little bit more, certain frequencies are going to be canceled out even more, and others are going to be boosted even more. And this goes and goes and goes until eventually you hit a, a certain uh, distance in wavelength, okay? Because every, every frequency has its length, right? And they'll be separated by an octave, okay? So now they're separated by a full octave. So by the time one reaches your ears and the other one's playing, you're hearing, okay? And, and this also goes into how your brain perceives sound. Um, your brain always perceives whatever it hears first, and then whatever comes behind it always sounds like a little bit muffled or a little bit delayed. I mean, it depends, but there's, I don't know, I, I'm not real knowledgeable about psychoacoustics, but I, I know, like, the basics. So anyway, so one driver will reach your ear a whole wavelength before the other reaches your ear, Okay. And so basically what that'll do is, especially if you have, say, one of these is for bass and the other's for mids, okay? So now you've separated the times in which frequencies hit your ears, and that creates an illusion. It's psychoacoustics. It's, it's something that you're hearing that isn't really there, and it's all related to timing, okay? And it just depends on how far the drivers are from one another. And that is also um, what coherency depends on. So uh, in any hybrid IM, a more coherent uh, IM is going to have all of its drivers set at specific distances to accommodate the wavelengths um, or, or the frequency spectrum that it is replaying uh, okay, or reproducing. Um, and so you can create a like a larger stage or a larger ambience um you can um <clears throat> like i said you can cut certain frequencies so if you make the the adjustment more minute you can cut frequencies or boost frequencies because you're at like a quarter wavelength you know or half wavelength or whatever you're not at a full full wavelength so anyway, I'm sorry guys, that's the best that I can explain it. But anyway, you have that issue with both of these IMs, but they're happening to two different extremes, and one of them is more pleasurable than the other. And let me explain further, okay? So in the HM20, you have this separation. It's a dis very distinct separation between the bass... Now, the bass does bleed into the lower mids just because it's a dynamic driver. It covers the whole host of frequencies. But then, once you get into the mids, followed by the, the treble and the upper treble, the time becomes shifted, okay? And it's almost shifted to the point where it's a whole wavelength apart. So there, there really isn't as much of a, of a interruption in frequencies bear with me it, there still is but basically it adds towards the um psychoacoustic factor so you get like a like a wider um you get a wider stage you get a deeper presentation okay everything becomes more exaggerated you get better separation now it's all entirely fake it's not it's not normal um but because the drivers are hitting your ears or the sound is hitting your ears at different times 
especially being split up into their individual frequency bands, you know, uh, sub bass, bass, lower mids, mids, upper mids, lower treble, upper treble. When those are hitting your ears at different times, whatever whatever instrument lies within those frequency bands is going to therefore hit your ears at different times, okay, different variables. So it will exaggerate that instrument's placement or that, that instrument's layering, especially, you know, if, if bass hits your ears first, you know, before uh, treble or like, you know, mids or whatever. And, and say there's, um, you know, an instrument like bass guitar, which occupies, you know, it can occupy both frequency ranges. It can occupy the bass, you know, sub bass and mid bass, but it can also occupy the upper mids, you know, or the mids and the, and the lower treble. Um, not necessarily the upper treble, but anyway, and, and what it can do is it can, it can give that instrument a certain amount of spatial quality to it. Okay. But then on the other end of the spectrum, and this is where this drive, this IM comes into play. <clears throat> this is where we're talking about those like quarter wavelengths and whatnot. Is when a when a driver is brought just out of sync with another driver, it creates this, and and, and especially when you have two drivers that that overlap um, very similar frequencies it creates this like this haze I, I don't know how to explain it but it's like a fog okay it's a you ever hear someone say like like an IM sounds veiled you know like it sounds something sounds veiled or um, or uh, it sounds like indistinct or it sounds foggy or hazy or blurry like, you, someone ever used those terms, okay? That is what's happening here in Hexa. Unfortunately, I know, I hate it, right? Um, there are a few problems with this IM. And hazy mids, blurry mids, ill-defined mids are one of them. Um, the imaging is is flat. It's really, really flat. There's a little bit of depth there, just a little bit. But there's no height, and there's and and the width, whatever is width, is just like is kind of like this. There's a little bit of curve to it. You just get a little bit of depth, but pretty much along the axis, everything is just super flat. Um, and like I said, the mids are just kind of blurry. So <clears throat> that is the big problem with these IMs. Um, I have not modified them. I have not played with them. I will not modify them. Um, I actually sold them to a buddy of mine and I'm throwing in a whole bunch more IMs. That's why I'm trying to get all these done real quick so I can ship them off to him. But anyway, so so overall tuning. The tuning is strong, okay? Um, the bass quality is pretty strong. The mid bass quality is pretty strong. Oh, and, and like the lower mids to like mids you know, the, the tuning is good, but the resolution is just not there. The detail is not there. The, the imaging is not there. It's just, 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 just out of focus. It's just like if you're watching a movie and whoever is racking focus has it out just a little bit. You notice it and you're just like, oh, and it's like stuck in the back of your mind. And, and now granted, you can still see the whole image. You know, you can see what's happening on stage. You can see the emotions that the the um, actors are portraying. You know, everything's there, but it's just ever so slightly out of focus, and it and it's it sits in the back of your mind, and it and it just kind of eats at you while you listen to it. That is the hexa, okay. Um, and then on top of that, you have the the 8K peak, okay. Let's talk about cheap BA timbre, okay? Um, <clears throat> there is a reason why they used these dampers instead of a black one and a white one, or a black one and a gray one, okay? And that is because of cheap BAs, cheap balanced armatures, okay? There's a certain timbre to them, all right? Especially with the treble. 
And when you try to smooth them out, especially when you're uh, <clears throat> fritzing with the tuning a little bit and you're trying to achieve a specific tuning, and um, you want to keep the electrical portion simple, well, you do it acoustically. Okay, how do you do it acoustically? You do it with dampers. Okay, you add or subtract dampening, and that is how you create your tuning profile. Okay, um, but unfortunately, the BA that are in here are just not that good. They're not very good. Um, I'll be the first one to say it. Uh, I said it once, and I'll say it again. I'll say it. 10 times if I have to. Um, in my personal opinion, <clears throat> the Truthier Zero is a better IM than the Truthier Hexa. Okay? It's got better tonality, it's got better attack, better decay, better dynamics, it's got better width, better depth, um, better layering. Um, resolution is a toss up. They're both not very good. Um, what else is there? Just the overall coherency of the Zero is pretty good. And that's because you're listening to mainly one driver. The 7mm driver <clears throat> is doing the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to the Zero. The 10mm driver is strictly a subwoofer. It is just doing the bass. That's why the bass on that set is detached from the rest of the frequency spectrum. And that is why this, the, the woofer, the 10 millimeter, is a subwoofer. Because it really, anything over 200 hertz is, okay? They're using a capacitor in parallel, and it's, it's cutting all the high frequencies. So, it's a low pass, um, or a high cut. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, so not much to say on these. Uh, I'm just not a big fan. The the lower treble is just a little bit too too tacky, um, just a little too much uh, cheap treble ba timbre. The upper treble is fine. It's it's not bad. It's it's, it's nothing special, but it's not bad. Um, but it's mainly the lower treble that I have a problem with, and especially the mids and the flat imaging. It's just flat as cardboard. Um, it's not. It doesn't pop. It has no depth to it. Um, even even the dynamics just it's just I don't know. It's it's not it's not very good in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> and the one I am that like that I've been building forever is a one plus three, and I think that my one plus three spanks the hell out of it. And that's you know it's just my personal opinion, but I think it's way better than 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 the hexa. Um, but then again, nobody can buy it because <laughs> I'm the only person that makes it. <clears throat> Alright, so let's talk about the HM20. Okay, so similar thing. There's a little bit of incoherence with the, uh, with the HM20. They're not the most coherent, especially when it comes to the difference between the mids um, to the upper treble. Now, there is not really much of a, of a lower treble emphasis in these. They... they dip down really quick, okay? Um, from 8 kilohertz, they dive. And so they're, therefore you don't really get that that um, lower treble harshness or that lower treble emphasis. emphasis. But they regain at about uh, 13, 14 kilohertz. I'm, I'm looking at the graph here. I have the graph on my computer. Um, and it just carries out from like 13 all the way to like 16, 17. So, so anyway, how do they sound? Um, they actually sound pretty good. They, they're good. The, the tuning is, is, it's not the best. Um, it's for a certain somebody. They're, they're definitely tuned fun. They're not, they're not, um, they're not referenced. They're not neutral. They're not DF neutral. Um, they, uh, or DF diffuse filled, whatever. Um, they are relatively V-shape. They're like a chop top V-shape, but with upper, upper treble emphasis. Um, so yeah, so they are pretty bright in the top end. Um, the mids are, 
are kind of bright a little bit. Um, and then you have a, a scoop in the, the lower mids. Um, and so, so there is a little bit of, um, like hollowness to them that they're, they're a little bit on the, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm sorry guys, I'm losing the word for it. Uh, they, they're just not really like full body, you know, they lack a little bit of lower mids. So they're just a little bit on the cold, cold side. But other than that, they have really, really good really really good stage like the stage and the imaging are really good on these um, the width is really good like I said the depth is incredible the layering oh my god the layering is incredible on these like it's really really good they are super fun to listen to the only thing is is that the tuning is v-shaped so some people are not going to be a fan of that they're they're gonna hear that that kind of KZ house sound. Now they did adjust it, so it's not like your normal KZ house sound. But um, these sound way more hi-fi than than these. Now now I will say that tuning wise, they did a good job on the Hexa. Um, they do sound like reference, um, almost neutral. Um, vocals are good. You know the the mid range qual like the 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 tuning itself is good, but other than that, the quality is just not there. Um, and then on the other side, y here the quality is good, but you don't have very much of it. So there's not very much lower mids. Um, if you if you're the type of person that listens to like female vocals, you're gonna like these. Like they're really good. Um, if you listen to male vocals, male vocals are going to sound a little bit hollow. They're going to sound a little bit weak. Um, they're not going to be as forward in your face. They're going to be kind of recessed. Vocals in general are, are pretty recessed on this pair. But because of that super wide imaging and that super deep, open, airy, like, layering, um, the vocals rest in like a pocket and let me zoom out so I can kind of explain it to you guys so I'll use these IAMs as an example so like so like here we go so here's the left and right on the um, on the HM20 okay and here are the vocals alright when normally on other IAMs the vocals will be like this Okay, the vocals will come out to here. All right, but the HM20, it's like a single point. So the instruments that lie in the other, in the outer positions, you know, like not quite panned 100% to the left or 100% to the right, they stand out a lot more. And then of course, the louder the volume, the closer they are to you, and also the the, the more they are panned towards center, the closer they are to you. So you have all this room to play with for instruments, okay? So stuff goes whizzing all over the place. Um, but, for example, with the truth ears, okay, you have, you know, they're a little bit more something like this, but here's, here's the vocals, okay? It's like this, all right? That's how it sounds on the truth ear. So I'm running out of stuff to move around. So you have so now here are your your instruments that are tuned that are panned, you know, 75%, you know, 50%. Um not quite all the way to the left or all the way to the right. They don't have as much room to play around in, okay? They don't have very much to move because your vocals occupy a greater space and also <clears throat> everything is closer. It's more like this, okay? So this is how how they image. It's kind of an arc, but it the, but there's not much depth to things. But the HM20 is way deeper, it's way deeper, and and the vocals are way narrower. They kind of fit in a pocket. So so I'll put it this way: um, if you listen to pretty much any kind of music, um. You should be okay with the Truth Ear Zero. The, the tuning's pretty balanced. 
But like I said, there, there's really not much other than the bass that is really quality. Um, the upper treble's okay, but there's just not really much more there. The imaging just doesn't do it for me. The layering doesn't really do it for me. Um, the the mid range, like I said, it's, it's kind of blurry. It's it's tacky. It's got it's got that that plasticky timbre to it. It just it's not. I don't know. Anyway, enough saying that. But anyway, um, if you if you listen to any kind of electronic music, especially holy crap, dude! If you listen to electronic music with female vocals, um, or you listen to orchestral, okay, uh, or if you listen to jazz, like especially live recordings, binaural, binaural on these is like orgasmic it's awesome okay um what else if you listen to rap hip-hop anything with bass you know techno whatever drum and bass these are going to be fantastic just because they're v-shaped they're fun so go in expecting that okay go in expecting a fun tuning don't expect vocals to be in your face they're going to be a little ways back they're going to be a little bit thin sounding um but there's so much room for everything to move around, you'll really like the way you hear stuff. It, the way it's spaced out and the way it's separated, trust me, guys, you will enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, it's kind of a shame. I, I'm not, I don't want to come down on the Hexa. You know, it, it will have a market. People will like it. It's not a bad I am. Whoops. But I'm just so disappointed compared to to what I got from the zero and I mean I'm thinking about buying another zero just for the hell of it because I really really like that I am it took me some time to warm up to it um, because it is kind of empty in the in the vocals especially like the lower mid area it's it's got that cut um, right before the the giant bass hump but man, they were just so smooth, and like I said, everything was separated, because you have one driver, and it's a small driver, so it's fast, and it's doing all the frequencies other than the bass. The bass is exclusively one driver, and they're separated to the point where that bass just kind of stands out, and has its own little space to breathe, and it's kind of front and center, while everything else just kind of rests on top of it. Very good very very good so anyway guys um, that is my combo review of the HM20 and the Truth Air Hexa now uh, without a further ado I'm going to open these guys up real quick for you and then I'm going to get them out of here uh, shit I need a screwdriver Dirt, it's right in front of me uh, so anyway I hope you guys are ready for a great weekend um, I have to work and it sucks my weekends are always shit <laughs> so I got a lot of work to do no I won't open that one close that one up Um, now, people were asking me to take these apart just because they wanted to know what model of drivers were in them, but I really don't care to know. Um, they're just not exciting enough for me to, to really care to, to take them apart all the way. Um, the design is, is fascinating, and um, I'll show you guys because I, I, I know you'll enjoy it. So... So here we go. Okay, so here, here are the IMs. All right. So you got the circuit board, and for the first time, the two-pin connector. Oh come on, you can focus better than that. The two-pin connector is soldered directly to the PCB. There are only two resistors and one capacitor which is why I said the the tuning is more acoustic so you have your DD 
pretty much doing everything. Um, but because of the the tube diameter, the uh, tube diameter actually acts as a um, as like a um, a low pass, and it cuts out some of the high frequencies. Let's see if I can get a better view of it. It's really hard to see, guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, let's see if maybe you can see it better from this side. Yeah, there we go. So, come on. So you have a dampener right there, and the damper kind of cuts some frequencies too. But then also you have the diameter of the tube, which is usually like 0 0.08 millimeter. So that cuts out some of the higher frequencies. And then this little tube you have back here, this is a vent to vent out the excess pressure. So that's why these don't have any driver flex or anything, they breathe. And then you have this nozzle here. I believe this is for the treble. Um, and you have this little flare here, which basically allows maximum treble to get to your ears. Okay, And this one BA here, this is just adding a little bit of mids, a little bit of upper mids, um, and you can tell because there's a restriction here, so they're, they're using this as kind of like a like a treble cut, okay? So even though the tube isn't really that long, um, it's still almost as narrow, it's just a little bit wider than the um, dynamic driver tube, and that's just to cut out some of the high frequencies, and then like I said, you got the, the dual BA here, and that's just to give a little bit more power behind the treble, because one BA by itself is just a little bit weak. Um, and then you have that flare, which acts kind of like a horn, and that just amplifies the signal. And then they hit the dampers, and the dampener just kind of takes the edge off, uh, kind of cleans up the tuning a little bit. I don't know what that is. Is that a scratch? So anyway, yeah, so that's the, that's the out, outlet for the bass. Um, that's the outlet for the treble, and then the outlet for the mids. And then you have this nice little circuit board here. Now this is super easy to manufacture. That's why they can sell these for 80 bucks. Um, they're probably actually still making a pretty healthy margin on these just because the amount of money that they're sa saving in labor. Okay, Because all they have to do is glue the drivers, shove them in, all right, apply the dampers, and then they don't even have to tin this wire. They can literally just go, well, they got to tin it on one side. I'm sure they got to tin it on the driver's side. But when it comes to the, the these on the circuit board, I don't even think they tin these. I think they literally just set them on the terminals, on the pads, and just went pssss. And then same thing with the connector. There's no fiddling with nothing. You just drop it all in and then slam the lid on. Super, super easy to manufacture. The only thing that really took a lot of time with these was the um, design, designing this in CAD, you know, and just like kind of designing the acoustics of it, even though they're not really the best, um, still, like, it's still a lot of work. Is my stuff starting to chip? Oh yeah, I guess it's starting to chip. Oh, you fucker. Well, I guess I'll have to clean that up. Huh. Thought they were chipping. So anyway, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's the same dynamic driver as the, um, as the Truth Air Zero. And then, if I could only guess, I would say this is a 31736. And then I would say this is probably a, uh, 50060. Or... Um, I'm not sure. 50060. I don't know of any mid BA that's this small. It's the only one that I can think of. It could be at 81229 to 8128. Um, let me know if you guys, any of you pros out there, you know of any mid range BAs that are this form factor? Let me know, because off the top of my head, I can't think of anything right now. I, I, I mean, there's a 3, 30017, but that's definitely not what that is. 
that's definitely like a three one six one eight. So, anyway, all right, let's get into the uh, HM twenties. These are pretty cool to take apart. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so one thing you'll notice is there is an epoxy uh, coating layer on the back. Like there's a uh, coat of epoxy, and that is actually because of this mesh right here. They just took the little attention to detail. They didn't want to. Um, they didn't want to, uh, you know, short out the the crossover or the frequency divider. So they just put a little layer of epoxy on the circuit board. Oh, and also, one thing you guys might notice uh, or find interesting. The way they cut this metal is actually a chemical etching process. It's it uses photolithography. Um, basically, they expose it to UV light with like a pattern on it, and then it, they remove the um, the layer of the um, the part that was exposed, and then they run it through a chemical bath, and it etches out any area that wasn't exposed and they just sand it down real quick and that's how they get super super duper small holes like this um, you can also do it using electrolysis um, underwater you can take a little tiny needle but the amount of time that it would take for you to to drill all those holes um, the only way they could do it is if they had like a special jig where they had pins on both sides but they would have to have every single one because for a machine to sit there and go, it would just be crazy. But yeah, it's um, it's a electro, uh, sorry, it's an etching chemical process that they use to create holes of that density. It's not something you can do uh, machining. So anyway, just thought that was something cool. And uh, yep, yeah, so this is the resin. I am resin cavity. All right, it's uh. This looks like it was actually made on more of a traditional 3D printer, but I know it's got to be a DLP, uh, DLP printer, because those are the only ones that you can like print really fast. But that that layer height looks like it's kind of out of adjustment. Like you can see, it's starting to get starting to get a little wonky on that side. So they must run the machines a lot. But anyway, um, so there's the new uh, Xun. Uh, DD 7 millimeter and you can kind of just barely make out Let's see damn it it's so hard to see inside these just hate that KZ next time you send me an IM please send me one that's like clear I like clear stuff it's easier to see inside but anyway yeah so you see the tube so basically the majority of the heavy lifting is done by the dynamic driver here. All right, um, but the BA it's kind of hard to see, but they all connect through the same tube, and then the tube comes up right there. Um, so they they do their part too. That the nozzle, the opening's fine. Um, it's a miracle that as much treble actually gets out of there um, as 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 it does, but. Uh, Especially with the tube length and everything, but yeah, I don't know. I have to get a little deeper into the tuning of these. But um, but yeah, so there are your. I believe those are your. Uh, what are they? Five. Oh shoot, I forgot the name. That's a th uh, three three double oh nine five, and then these I believe were three one. I don't think they're 31736, but I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, yeah, so 2BA, 2BA, and then a single BA. These are all E-Audio brand. I'm not sure about the ones that um, that Hexa was using. I believe these are uh, Belzing, which is kind of another reason why I didn't like them. Um, that one looks like E-Audio, that mid-BA. So that could probably be a five zero zero six zero, but those treble BA, you see the little little metal slats there, the little um, magnetic pole piece or whatever. That is indicative of uh, of a Belzing 
uh, BA. So anyway, so yeah, just a couple little things I'm noticing with the design. And then you have your single capacitor there. Actually, you got one more capacitor right there. And then they, to save on space, they run a bunch of tiny resistors in uh, parallel. So I'm sure some are series too, but probably series parallel. And then since this is only a, a, a two-way system, you have a positive for the uh, dynamic and then you have a positive for the BA and that's really all you need for this kind of design you don't really need anything else um, but yeah and then they're pretty much all run in series um, you might have a series parallel between the uh, 30095 and then these but oh yeah there's two more so yeah so one two three four five six seven Wait, seven, seven BA. What? I thought it was six BA. Two, four, six, seven. Am I smoking something? Sorry, guys. It's been it's been a long night. Wow. But anyway, um, yeah. Well, well done to uh, KZ for for making it a solid IM. They did a good job. I'm not gonna lie. So, um, and yeah, as far as the Truth Ear Zero go, or the Truth Ear Hexa, I can only hope that the the next release is a little bit better. Um, you guys might like it. Like I said, the tuning is good. Um, but as far as my listening goes um yeah i just i just don't like i don't like the mids i don't like the upper mids um and i don't like the way that they they image I just don't like the the stage and i don't like the way they image presentations just just a bit on the weak side so anyway guys uh i hope you enjoyed that video and then yeah my my beloved uh, performer fives. Um, I am in the process of fixing the video for these. I also have another video that I'm getting ready to upload, um, so stay tuned for that. That is basically me tearing apart a bunch of drivers, and we're looking at the driver guts. Um, here, there are actually some of the remnants. Okay, so yeah, this is all crap that I have taken apart or am in the process of taking apart. Um, so look for a video on that. I kind of go into a brief explanation on how how all those work. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone has a safe, safe, happy, and healthy uh, weekend. Um, I have the uh, what is it? The Kiwi Ears or uh, sorry, Kiwi Ears. What the fuck's it called? Why is that? Why are they always weird names? Kiwi ears. I keep wanting to say orchestra, but it's not the orchestra. Anyway, I got the new Kiwi ears. I am coming, and I also have a uh, Warner coming, the um, Tangzu Tangzu Warner. So that's coming, and um, we'll take a look at those both. I'm going to take apart the uh, Kiwi ears. I am. Um, it probably be a couple weeks before I end up doing that, just because I want to get a good amount of listening in, and then we also have the. Performer 5, which I'm going to take that apart. Um, I'm not going to go into full depth, but I will take the face plates off and we'll go over the crossover, um, kind of take a closer look at the back of the drivers and see what's up with these babies. So, anyway, guys, take care. Have a good night. See ya. Peace.